Welcome to Engineering Unboxed, where every day is Christmas. Today, we're digging into state-of-the-art flex couplings and some of the most highly engineered clamps you've ever seen. Most of you have probably seen our Killing a Duramax series. In the last episode, you'll recall we made 912 horsepower by freeing up the intake and exhaust. 850, 60, 70, 80, 90, push it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I just saw 912 horsepower. Holy sh When Eric was fabricating the five inch exhaust, he went on the hunt for a high quality stainless steel flex coupling and came across one from Vibrant Performance. He bought it, installed it, and fell in love with it. It's not only a work of art, but it's incredibly well engineered. That got us looking into other parts from Vibrant, like their line of HD clamps to hold our boost tubes together, bellows, slip joints, tubing, wastegate flanges. We knew we had to get more of their parts in our dyno program. We reached out to Derek, their head of sales and marketing, and a few days later, we got these. As I said a few times, I like doing business with family-owned companies, and Vibrant is one of them. Back in 1985, Dino Rossi started Vibrant Power in the city of Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. They refer to it as the New Jersey of Toronto. I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> but back then, they supplied exhaust and vibration control components to the automotive and heavy industrial markets. The following year, they began offering flex couplings for vehicles equipped with transverse mounted engines. Small imported cars had to have engines mounted sideways, which meant they had to have a flexible exhaust coupling so it could move as the engine rocked. The factory couplings didn't last and bang, you'd have an exhaust leak. Vibrant stepped up to the task and knocked it out of the park. Flash forward to 1997, Dino's son, Dino Jr. started Vibrant Performance which focused on exhaust and induction components for the sport compact performance market. As everyone knows, that scene exploded, and so did their product line. But they weren't out there creating strut bars and springs like everybody else. They were solving problems for fabricators. Dino Sr. still runs the operation today with his wife Diana as the controller. Their son Dino Jr. is a director of operations and his wife, Lori, is in administration. And they have a few cousins that work there too. I love it. It's a family affair. Most of their employees are lifers, kind of like banks. For example, Derek, our friend who put this order together, has been there for 18 years. Okay, now you get the picture. Let's see what Derek sent us. FedEx this time, the trusty Milwaukee. Well, this is something I like. They sent us a catalog. I gotta do a new catalog. <laughs> I'm telling you. All right, what have we here? I know Eric ordered what we'll be using in the near future, so there is going to be a variety of flex couplings. Here's a larger one. Four inch, all right, by eight inches long. And what I like, they've got a variety of them. They've got the, the bellows exposed inside, they've got the bellows shielded. They've got a variety of types of innerliners in the bellows assemblies. And to give you an idea of what those look like, these things are eye candy. I gotta open one up. Yeah, this is, this is the guy right here. Oh, nice little press fit box. Protection on the outside, as well as a nice smooth, but flexible inside. This is kind of the top of the line of, of, of what they do. These things are a bit of magic, I'll tell you. Oh, these HD clamps. These things are really special. Ah, okay, spring-loaded clamps. It's pretty apparent their goal is to save fabricators a ton of time. 
The beauty of spring-loaded clamps is that as the hose that you're clamping takes what's called a cold set. Now, of course, if you're running boost air or whatever, they heat cycle, the hose heat cycles. And after a while, it takes a set and the clamp is somewhat looser, so to speak, because the, the hose material has taken this set and it's now a bit smaller due to the pressure of the clamp. The spring-loaded clamp follows that and, and maintains pressure without you coming back with your screwdriver or nut driver or socket and tightening the damn clamps periodically. So it's almost like you put it together and you forget it. Also, V-band assemblies. V-band assemblies are, are literally rocket science. These things will take incredible pressure, and this is a T-bolt style V-band clamp. If you guys have not seen a T-bolt clamp before, let me disassemble this one. And this stuff is top quality, and I just chucked the T-bolt. Basically, what you've got is a V-band. And it's got a counter bore and a protrusion, if you will, so that gives you a line to line inside, and, and then it gives you the tube OD here, which is four inch, and they've accommodated metal walls so that when you slip the four inch in, if it's the correct wall thickness, it'll be line to line on the inside. Any interruption in diameter inside a flow path gives you drag, and it's counterproductive, or if you're moving air into an engine, it diminishes performance. So they've got this completely scienced out. Beautiful T-bolt assembly. So the reason we have so much and such a variety here is we are outfitting Dino Cells 1 and 2. Dino Cell 1 is the monster truck super turbo uh, and in this case, super twin turbo project, and Dino Cell 2 is the killing a Duramax project. Now here we've got a mandrel bent 90 degree angle, one inch, appears to be one inch stainless tubing. Now we're getting into fittings, which are AN fittings. All their fittings appear to be black anodized, which is cool. I, in, in the absence of a color choice, I'll, I'll go black every time. They are obviously very much into the hose and fitting business when it comes to oil, air, water. I feel like I'm into somebody's Christmas stocking here. And there's all kinds of really trick and cool things. I wonder what's in the other box. There we go. Oh, you ever fabricate a turbo flange just for one project? We do it all the time. I think we've got a resolution to that issue. That's a turbine inlet flange for, for weld purposes. Oh my God, turbine oil drains. Oh, this is cool. So here we have a double slip joint. Now we can make these in our tube shop, but it's a pain in the ass. Here you have it, ready to go, bang. All you gotta do is weld it up and you're there. Very, very slick, extremely slick. This has gotta be another one of those serious five inch flex couplings. Dino Cell 1 thought I was cheating on it with Dino Cell 2. We'll fix that right now. Oh, here we go. These are the ferrules that go with the HD clamps. This is an HD clamp. Now these are available in different diameters, so what's cool about these clamps is they join with a pip pin. 
the pip pin, you just press the, the little button on top of the pin, insert it, and it's clamped. And they're very quick to remove. So they do these in aluminum, stainless, and titanium. So here we have two three-inch ferrules. These are stainless steel. You weld these on the ends of the boost tube. There is a, a jig, a special clamp, that allows you to get the gap correct, do the weld up, pull them apart, put the union sleeve around them and slip them together again. And then the outer part of the clamp clamps the union sleeve inside the clamp. The O-rings are already compressed by the union sleeve. You've already got the proper air gap. You insert, insert the lock pin. So once the assembly is put together, the pit pin's in, you've got your predetermined air gap between the two ferrules. And, and now you can have a compliance of up to 12 degrees of angular misalignment between, say, a rocking engine and a boost tube going to an intercooler. This is a fabricator's dream come true. If you think that all of this is a lot, this is nothing. I want to get into their catalog real quick. I'm going to reload a few boxes here and make some space. And we will see what all else they do. So feast your eyes on this. Let's just kind of go through section by section. First is fluid delivery. Flexible hoses of all types, including braided stainless armored hose, hose-in fittings, a wide variety of them, catch cans, which is kind of cool, and tools for cutting hose cleanly. Cooling and heat transfer. They've got charge air cooler cores, uh, some pre-assembled charge air coolers. So if you want to fab up a charge air cooler, air to air, that's covered. The HD clamps, which we just went through a while ago, and variety of sizes, and this is really cool. They have transition weld ferrules that go from one tube size to another with an angular conical transition, which is really slick and clean. There's the union sleeves I was talking about. These are replacements. Silicon connectors and hose clamps. All kinds of worm gear clamps, T-bolt clamps, charge air cooler hose couplers, diameter to diameter. These are all aramid reinforced four ply, uh, work up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is great if, if you're running a, a very high boost level out of a, a compressor. Then they've got some air intake parts and slick little bell mouth velocity stacks, which I think are cool. Uh, some aluminum mass airflow sensor adapters, which is cool. And then tubing and bends. Aluminum stainless steel oval tubing. You know, like the NASCAR guys run out under the rocker panel uh, and still have keep the car low. They size their oval tubing in round tube flow equivalents, which is cool. And they have oval tube bends, which are very hard to find. If you're into exhaust fabrication, a full line of exhaust fabrication materials, mufflers, resonators, V-band flange assemblies, exhaust collectors, merge type collectors, exhaust flanges. Then we go to titanium. Now I gotta admit, Titanium exhaust is very cool. It's uh, kind of the creme de la creme. If you really want to rock out, you're, you're a bucks up guy, you're gonna run the tie. And then we make a lot of heat because we make a lot of power. They've got the heat and the acoustic solutions. In other words, if you want to hear that really fine piece of electronics you've got, in the car. Of course, if you've got a lot of subwoofer, you don't need the acoustic sl solution. Whatever's happening in the car drowns out everything else. But if you want to just kick back and contemplate while you're driving down the road in your hot rod, they've got a acoustic materials as well. 
this is, hard, it's hard to see, it says vibrant in every, every possible way you possibly could. Uh, a very complete fluids, gases, hot, cold, oil, water, air, whatever you're doing, these guys have it covered. And all the AN style fittings, uh, all the weld on trick pieces, I've never seen a catalog like this. This to me is a first. So to the Rossi family and everybody else at Vibrant, it's clear you've mastered the sport compact market, but it's also abundantly clear you've done the same in the diesel market. I can't wait to class up our dyno cells with your products. This is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love doing that. <laughs>